You think you know how the world works, Doctor Strange? What if I told you the reality you know is one of many? We want to do very boldly crash into the Marvel mystical universe. I do not believe in fairy tales about chakras or the power of belief. Forget everything you think you know. The journey of Stephen Strange is uniquely awesome. It's different. It feels like a huge experimental film. Action! It's utterly inspiring. This film is just mind-blowing. It's everything we ever dreamed of when we were kids. Who are you in this vast multiverse, Mr. Strange? What we've seen happen within the Marvel Universe is this ever-expanding coterie of superheroes blossoming out into the more surreal so that you can have otherworldly destruction happening in this world's space and time. And it's just about to explode into other dimensions. Open your eye. The stories in Marvel films are dealing with big questions. Who am I? What is the universe? Good and evil. So for us to be in one of the films is not only a childhood dream, it's also an adult dream. To be able to play off Tilda Swinton, Mads Mikkelsen, Rachel McAdams and Chiotel, it's really fantastic. Scott has an extreme love for Marvel, but also a clear vision of what he wanted to do with Doctor Strange. Cloak of Levitation, it came to you. The cloak is a huge challenge because it has to do so many things. It needs to move, it needs to behave, it needs to be extraordinary. We are in some pretty incredible locations that not only has Marvel never shot in before, but a lot of movies haven't shot in before. There's no place on the planet like Kathmandu. The production design of it is really staggering. Every single set is a reminder of how big a universe you're part of. The big challenge was scale. We created this 600-foot set. Action! We're crafting some really mind-trippy, out-there sort of sequences that I think approach action in really cool new ways. What you're seeing is kind of a blend of three or four martial arts. <laughs> Benedict threw himself into this role, and he went through months of physical training to learn how to fight and how to move. When this opportunity came up, I thought, I want to do this movie. We never want to repeat ourselves at Marvel, so the opportunity to do something totally new with an entirely new world, we just couldn't resist. Doctor Strange has always been my favorite comic book character in all of comics. I connect to that character because of the seriousness that the comic gave to the idea of mysticism and to the idea that the universe is a profoundly mysterious place. Action! What are these? Those books are far too advanced for anyone other than the Sorcerer Supreme. I'm excited about showing audiences a character who moves from skepticism to mysticism. Stephen Strange was created by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko in the heart of the 60s when all these classic, more well-known characters were being created. What's unique about Stephen Strange in the Marvel Universe is that he exists in the corner of magic and the mystic arts. He's the sorcerer in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The superhero came out of a context in the 60s of a bleed between Western science and logic and Eastern mysticism. My fear initially was how would this concept work in the 21st century? It made sense to make sure to steer it towards how he's introduced to what he becomes. I was thrilled at where he began and where he got to in this script. 
It was mainly the character arc and the journey he goes on in the film that drew me to the material. That's part of what I love about Doctor Strange. You know, if you don't know him as the arrogant, wealthy man of hubris that he was, you really can't appreciate the man he becomes after the scene when we see him crash. Billy, can you send me the... Got it. Scott literally said, this needs to be the greatest car crash in cinema history. It took eight different Lamborghinis. Uh, it involved shooting on two continents, all to achieve this very spectacular crash that, at the moment when it happens, has to feel like this visceral jolt of energy. I was in a Lamborghini, cut in half, being turned upside down, trapped inside the carcass of the car as the water was rising into it with a camera going underneath to capture me upside down. I was hard work, but it was good fun. You need a spectacular actor. And the fact that Benedict Cumberbatch is as enthusiastic as any actor that has ever joined our universe to portray this character is huge for us. Yeah, perfect. It immediately made sense to me, this material. There are moments in Carmitage where he's getting introduced to weapons. This is the staff of the Living Tribunal. And he's very cynical about the whole thing, as a modern audience might be. There are many relics. The wand of a tomb, the vaulting boots of Valtor. They just roll off the tongue, don't they? Then he just goes on this massive journey of self-discovery, and he has to suffer humility after humility. And that really fascinated me. That was the big draw. Well, Benedict was always our first choice for the role. I heard about this project through sort of vague interest in me. I flew to England to meet with him. He was the first actor I met with. And after that meeting, we're like, let's do it. Action. We found out, based on our shooting schedule, Benedict had to go do Hamlet and it wasn't gonna work out. So they had to look elsewhere. Eventually it became clear that it needed to be Benedict. And that's when we went back to them and said, okay, what would it take? When do you wrap on that? And we pushed our entire shooting and release schedule six months to wait for Benedict. He was literally on stage for Hamlet and then got on a plane 36 hours later and is Doctor Strange shooting in Nepal. It takes a certain type of actor with a certain type of commitment to, to do that, and that shone through on every single day he was on set. I studied some neurosurgery. I obviously studied the procedures that we perform in the film. Cranial nerves intact. We had on the hand advice from a very well-reputed neurosurgeon to talk about instrumentation, to talk about everything from scrubbing in to cauterizing a wound. I mean, really mind-blowing stuff. To have that level of intellect and have it combined with depth of feeling the way that he has, you just don't get that very often. Benedict displays such fierce intelligence, which makes perfect sense for a world-renowned neurosurgeon. And he has a very heroic quality to him. Action! It's brilliant, the stunts, the training, the work in front of green screen. It's been a real adventure. I think he brings a real heart to the character that he needs eventually. There's one specific moment in the film, which is when the Ancient One says, It's not about you. And the penny drops for the first time. His realization that he has a mission beyond his own self-interest is the true turning point for people to sort of lean in and sympathize with him. He is a character who is perpetually evolving, reckoning with both himself and with the extraordinary things that he is uncovering in a way that we haven't seen in the Marvel Universe yet. It is strange in a way, I suppose, no pun intended, that he's flown under the radar until now within the Marvel Cinematic Universe because he is a very big presence in the original comics. You're in a mirror dimension. Who's laughing now? I admire people having the courage to expand their minds into seeing that the world is more than what they thought it was. That's the journey of Stephen Strange. It's the right moment now for him to be the character that we get introduced to to open up that chapter of the Marvel Universe.